Hello one and today we are taking a look at ripple effects like those and how they actually work exactly and how can we make them in the grasshopper environment. So stay tuned and let's get into it. So this is basically the script and we have certain parameters here that can uh, adjust our kind of wavelength uh, or our splashiness and we also have the points that they are defined on here that we can manipulate and change where those ripples are coming from and this then gets all um, there is a little bit of like a sinus function here, but this is very easy to understand. And then we're also creating the mesh in the end that can get baked and that can create those very nice structures that we have here that you can use for your render. Anyhow, so let's um, start with a new script and let's get this from scratch so you can understand every kind of aspect to it. So let's delete those. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a very simple grid. Um, we reduce it by construct points and we're going to create two series uh, in here that have also a uh, amount of points. So for now, let's just do 99 copy to put it in the cones and copy this and now we have the x coordinates and the y coordinates and as you see they go right, right now like a you know uh, if you go to the top view they go x and according to y but we want to have them basically as a grid so we need to graph one of those and that will create basically all those points at once uh, simultaneously so because basically each x point gets created by each y coordinate point and we can also obviously create um, the uh, basically the fabric of the net itself that's going to be bigger or smaller it basically scales it in scale in a way so now that we have those points created um, we want to define the points that we want to have those splashes that we saw in here uh, because there might be several splashes so we want to have multiple of those so we're gonna create this using just the point command and then we are going to put those points here on several locations and as you see now they are now defined here now <clears throat> we also wanted to that those points have a distance and like a clarification between uh, each of those beginnings and the end points furthermore those points at the moment are basically laid out in those like lines and we want to have them basically all at once we want to have them all talking at once so we basically need to flatten uh, this again actually you might see about that but um, we might need to go back to that so now we need to create the distance between the points and now we have the resulting distance of each of those points however we need to actually because we want to have each individual distance um, we might need to graph this for now and then we might we need to put all those points together in order to create the sinus function so first of all let's create the sinus function this year by sinus is another mathematics as i think yeah trigeometry tri 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 geometry i don't know <laughs> words uh trigonometry yeah and that basically creates values between zero uh, minus one and one and that will be used for our um, z uh, destination so basically it goes up or downwards depending on that amount so we're gonna use the move command and gonna create them by the z axis uh, upwards and then we put in this here and we take the points that we had here in the beginning and as you see this already looks quite as we want to have it actually however it just only um, depends on just one points so 
we want to all those points we really see there's something going on here in the end but we want to have all those points reacting together in this sense so we basically we need to um add together the distances of each of those points in order for it to work correctly so um i might make a mistake here but uh we're gonna um fix that on the go if if we're not doing it correctly so as the, in the moment we basically we have um uh all like all those different branches with the different amounts of uh of our of our points and we need to basically flip this matrix so they all get um coined together let me just see how i made it here because i got a little bit confused last time with it okay so we have the points create the points get grafted and then we have the uh, okay the distances defined by that so we need to flatten this and then we are grafting the points here and this actually already looks quite better so if we're gonna create the points now okay they're still that is not always not still exactly the way we want ah, because right now they all get created like uh, four times but we want to basically put those points together so they are all of them put in the sinus function and we don't have four different branches but just one so we're gonna flip the matrix as we said so before we had four uh, four branches of each of those 9801 items but now we want to flip it and basically have uh, 9801 uh, branches with each of the four items and those now get basically added together and when they're added together we have them all just like in one package and this now results in just 981 uh, and 9, 9801 uh, items and those get then passed into the sinus function and they also most likely need to be yeah they need to be flattened don't forget that this will take some computing power otherwise and we need to put them now into the sinus function as well okay let me see if i made a little mistake here because i think now you see it is kind of working but it's not really the correct uh, measurement as we are seeing right now let me just take a look quick look on the cheat sheet how we made it here ah okay so here we made it basically the other way around we first define the distance then define the sinus function and then we uh, calculated the the differenti differentiation so we basically copy this um put this back here and then put the flipping function here and put the result back there so this looks a little bit more like it actually let me just recalculate those points yeah i think this looks pretty good already yeah yeah i think that works as you see if they're closer together the ripple effect gets kind of like equalized and they're all like almost like being equal and the more you put them apart the more of a mess kind of um, gets created here um so this already is quite good and with this um this amount uh, with those points we can just go under mesh and then triangulation under the dealer mesh and now we um, apply the points that we generated here and this will very nicely and very quickly generate a mesh on top of that so um, this would already work so if we would bake this you see it is a very well working mesh and it works pretty well however there is one thing that's kind of not really natural it is because you see the um the distance 
of it basically stays the same as if the ripple effect would not uh, be less over the distance because you have so some things like drag or um, like just physical like um, uh, resistance in this effect so we want to create a dependency on the distance depending how far away those things are so this sounds very complicated but it's actually very simple because it's just like a distance calculation so we already have the distance defined here and now we need to i think we need to have a dependency on the distance now and then apply this dependency on the results here whoopsie i don't want to close grasshopper but still let me take a look of how i made it the other time because i don't want to steal your time okay yeah so basically the distance then gets defined by the distance we had before which would result in in a slight modification and this is just like a general um, timer here okay let's see if i can get this back like that again so we're gonna create a multiplier that will multiply just the general amount of things in here so we want to have the amplitude of, of the how uh, far up those things get i think or how I know how frequent they are okay yeah. so this this controls the frequency of the things but now we also want to um, make a division depending on the distance that we have so we basically we are dividing the current distance by the distance of the things actually I cannot okay now we it's the other way around so we are uh, we have the distance of the we have the current sinus calculation and it, it is divided by the distance of our of our things and this also kind of needs a multiplier because that would make the farness let's say of uh, like how the, the diminishing or the reducing over the distance uh, stronger or less stronger so we also create a number slider here and this now then gets put into the results and that works so let's actually create it so it will be a little more usable uh -huh. hmm. and we can also maybe make this stronger as well those basically those parameters here they help a lot of uh, basically managing um, the strongness of each of those things so kind of like a like a slider almost or like a like a strongness of it and as you see it, it, it kind of gives us the results so we have the um, in, in the beginning we have the very strong wave and it like gets over a little bit less and less so you have to like work around with the sliders which of those things work the best for you which is like the most um, useful in this matter and you can always just um, put another slider in between or after that I think for example this is kind of like redundant so we're putting this actually here and it might create a better result overall mm. okay maybe not anyhow um yeah you can basically just like uh take the size in here and obviously if we are creating other points as well that also depend on those things it we can just recreate them here very easily and as you see they all have those kind of like uh, droplets to it and obviously we can change the intensity uh, really quick to kind of get a sense of scale to it and then um, also get the kind of the majority or the the important parts of it to stick out a little bit more so yeah and like now um i also made like another script uh that we can 
just maybe quickly also do to basically create a shape like uh, the pool around it um, so we're just gonna do a multiplication by uh, the beginning points and the step of it that will create the rectangle around it like here as you see and that that thing gets extruded upwards and to like a certain height by z obviously and then we would have basically the basic pool and we might want to have it so as well oh yeah it might be one amount basically less just because it's a division so we want to have it um minus one in here so it wouldn't get too big uh where is this here so it fits on there perfectly and we're also gonna move it downwards a little bit maybe by the half of the extrusion upwards so you would have it always like in the middle panel more or less uh, defined Obviously, we need to use it in the Z direction again. Otherwise, this really wouldn't work. Oh, and we also need to have it negative, I think. Yeah. Okay. So this would be our basically our basic pool. And yeah, and then you can just like very simply um, bake that as well. And maybe then also you can use it in do like offset, offset surface in the Rhino environment. And put it in the right direction, make a distance of I don't know how much, and then you basically have have your um, your surface, and then you need to also bake the material for the the water as well that we have here now. It could be any other kind of uh, thing as well, kind of like a uh, surface for landscape. I don't know. And then you just need to apply some materials to it. Uh, for example, you can in the Vera editor, if you have it installed, you can just go under liquid and just place some kind of waste um, to it. And then you can just render it rather quickly and have this uh, effect immediately seen and the result that you want to have. So they're actually the real kind of um, ripples on uh, the water. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope this helped uh, out a little bit. It is a very kind of simple way of creating those ripple effects. But um, if you want to have uh, this effect, in sp uh, especially, it would take a lot of time to create it yourself in the grasshopper environment or in the rhino environment, I mean. And if you want to make some adjustments, it would make it very, very difficult. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you around the next time.